Namaste and in la catch, and welcome to this episode of One World in a New World. I'm your host, Zen Benefiel, and as always, I'm going to remind you of those two phrases. Namaste comes from the Sanskrit written, Brahmi spoken. It means the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. In la catch comes from the other side of the world, the Mayan culture, and it simply means I am another you. Now, these are two ancient languages that understood primary facts about us. So what if we practice those today and how might that reflect in your life to make it more unique, better, maybe even happier? Don't know. Try it. Find out. I challenge you. Great. So this week's guest is Gloria Sanchez, and she's a founder and owner of Emotica, which is a life coaching uh, business as she has in Luxembourg. And she used to be a senior finance manager for JP Morgan. So she's got a, a very interesting twist in her life and, and not uncommon. She also graduated from the University of Granada with a master's degree in political science and sociology, great help for a life coach. She's a master practitioner of NLP, a certified coach, and an Enneagram practitioner. So this is going to be a wonderful conversation. I already know. Gloria, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Zene. It's, it's an honor to be here uh, with you and uh, listen to you and uh, having this conversation today. I think it's uh, a thing that the, it will be really wonderful. Good and fun, hopefully, right? Um, yes. So if, yeah, if life's not fun, you're doing the wrong thing and you better figure out something else, right? So in this process that you've gone through, I mean, uh, right away, there's this stark contrast from being a finance manager to being a life coach. And maybe not so much because one of our greatest fears is that we fear the loss of money or the lack of it. Um, but before we go into that, let's, let's dive into your history a little bit, or in your case, your herstory and, or her story just to be clear. And what, how did you begin to make that transition? Was there an earlier time in life when you began to have this inner awareness that made you question what was going on in your outer world? Um, I think I have uh, this question in about the world or my life. I think uh, uh, my mother said uh, once that uh, I was like a four or five years old when I asked herself what was possible that they found uh, people, you know, like uh, uh, bones of people before the, that Jesus Christ was born. So I think uh, I have uh, already uh, kind of questioning about uh, what is the reality we have and uh, what it means be a human. And uh, I've been, I remember myself, uh, you know, uh, reading books uh, like uh, uh, Freud, uh, psychoanalysis. I still remember when I became an athe atheist because I was reading uh, the psychoanalysis of, uh, of Freud. And uh, it uh, has been all my life uh, searching for myself, uh, like uh, who I was. So I have an idea of the, what were my limitations, like a conscious idea of what I was, but uh, I was always feeling a peace, always feeling a peace. So I like so much meet people and uh, I always get in knowledge from an experience and an emotion from people. But I think that uh, one of the things that define all of this is it was strangely or unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know how to say that is uh, it was suffering. Um, I have uh, something that uh, died very early in my life. I was eight years old and it was a person I really was so dear of myself. Mm -hmm. I lost so much. And uh, since there, I think I was aware that the suffering could be very, very um, hurtful, you know? And uh, I was in this search for liberating this suffering. Sure. 
sure. and in a certain moment, and I go to the point because I used to lose myself in the in the speech. Uh, in a certain moment, what was happening is that uh, um, looking about myself in the different uh, areas, uh, I've been, for example, a dancer in Ibiza. You know, in a disco when I was 20 years old, and then I become a, a, a senior manager in a in a in a bank. So, uh, what is me? What what are you looking? And uh, it's happened to me that uh, another death, another someone very close to me, and as well very young, uh, was a wake up call. I said, uh, Gloria, you are looking, you are looking, you are looking, but you are looking maybe in the wrong building. Uh, you are looking for an idea, a reality that is in a frame and you have been done your path in that frame and you are almost getting, I could see the top. I mean, not the top of the top because I, I wasn't be Jimmy mm -hmm. Diamond, but I could see the top and I said, no, this is not the point. I'm not getting really what is me. And in the same moment, what happened that my mother uh, become ill. So I was in my searching about myself and uh, in that moment, my mother has a, a, a cancer mm. and uh, I was already planning to have a, a stop and I took this opportunity. I, I talked with my manager and I said, at least I need three months. I need to go to assist my mother. And that was the, that was the wake up call. So the wake up call coming before, but I didn't want to listen. I even become ill. I got a genetic disease that wake up. I didn't want to listen. I didn't want to listen. And then it was to see the, you know, something that really uh, were very important to me. Sure. And it was my mother. And this was the thing that said, I need to get alive. Well, it's because interesting, you know, we, the, it, and heartfelt condolences uh, the, the, for losses. And, and that's really, you know, our transformations generally come from um, some kind of trauma emotionally because we we begin to looking you know look for self and, and um, it's an arduous process especially like you say when you're looking in in all the wrong places it's like looking for love in all the wrong places right and the framing that you were in might have been earlier in the long-term movie right but it, it got you to and and the processes it's like, and, and I think you've learned this as you've grown up, that the universe puts things in place for us to pay attention to if we're able. And if we're not, then we kind of suffer something that yeah. tries to bring us back into that place. And, and it's kind of a very Zen place of just what is without emotional attachment, right? And, and for you know, it's kind of a gender challenge, right? Because men traditionally are stifled in their emotions. So it's easier for them to go to that place, although it may not be fully authentic. And mm -hmm. yet the feminine aspect of it is more, I mean, you're steeped in emotions. You feel you're, this is your, the basis, you know, like John Gray said long ago, you know, women are global, men are compartmentalized. <laughs> right? So there's that challenge between the two. And the balance that we have in each other of that masculine and feminine energy in the, in the dance of finding self, right? So when you went through that process and, and, um, and drawing that up again, I, I apologize because I know that's a tender spot for you. How did you get through it? And, and what did you notice in the process that helped you transcend the trauma um i think that was uh the the fear was our wake up call because uh i could lose my mother and uh, you know i'm living in luxembourg my family living in spain so normally i see my family like uh some weeks very short weeks two weeks three weeks Sometimes mm -hmm. my family come here and stay longer, but you know, the, the work is here. So in a moment I thought it could be that even these three months I will be there. It was very um, uh, egoistic way, selfish way to say, but uh, how can I say, even if I will, I'm going to see with my mother and the cancer can get uh, um, 
the life of her life, mm -hmm. I have an opportunity if I put together every day that I maybe will have, I, I, if, if, if she doesn't have cancer, I didn't have this opportunity to be all these days with her. So I said, I need to do that day, the best of the day, whatever it happened, it doesn't matter. And, and never think about the final thing. You have only today to think about. You just have to make your best because your mother cannot afford to see your fear. Your sister cannot afford to see that you are fear. And if you are plenty on fear, you are losing maybe the only days that you have left with her. So this is not good for you. You are not helping anyone else. I have today. And this is what I thought. And this is what the, it told me, you know, through the chemo, through the, well, the chemo, uh, it was my sister that was really there and it mm -hmm. was really uh, difficult. I jump in, uh, just managing the, in the business, you no, know, in the, in the company, how I can leave the company and go there. So, and I, I was there and, uh, and it was happened something that it was a flower. Every one of us, my mother, my sister, and myself, we flower on that days. You, I have the worstly moment, you know, in a, in a certain moment, my husband was with, a with, a depression and I leave my husband alone in Luxembourg and my mother on the other side, you know, that we don't know. And I was happy. I was happy. And I was wondering how it's possible to be happy in the worst of the moment of your life. You are going to lose your job that you have been really working for that 20 years. You, you could lose your mother. You could, your husband, you don't know what could happen. And I'm happy. So see my mother eating was a gift. See my sister smile and laugh was a gift. So it's now. Right, it is now, you know, Eckhart Tolle, you know, the power of now and a long time ago, an American author named Og Mandino wrote a book called The Greatest Salesman in the World. You know, and everybody thinks it's about sales and, and things like that. And part of it was, but what he says ultimately, and he calls it the precious present, yeah. right? And in that it is truly a precious present to be in the precious present <laughs> and to and that's something that humans, I think, the majority of us have a real difficult time of not thinking about the past and, and worrying how that's going to affect the future. And, and what you found is in that moment of just being there without concern for the past or the future, you felt the gift of that in how you were flowering with your mother and your sister to use your words and it's a perfect expression because it it is it's blooms right that whole expression and experience has a chance to bloom and you feel it it's a visceral kind of experience it's undeniable yet how do our, how do you articulate that share it with others so that they can at least be aware that their own experience is available too so how have you done that in the work that you have learned to do? And, and maybe now is a good time to kind of broach the subject of the Enneagram, which is yeah, a good Yeah, and uh, you, you have, uh, you have uh, just put me the line because, uh, you know, I am, you mentioned Edgar Tolle, and uh, this is one of the readings that uh, I think it was years ago, and I couldn't get a word on that. And uh, in those days, uh, you know, the power of now, I, I, I have my decision before I read the book. And then I saw again the title and that moment I said, ah, this is what I was doing. So let's see what it is. And then it was a blooming because, uh, uh, you know, he, he had a, the, the kind of knowledge he got about the presence, about uh, the, the be out of there, that there is something more than the mind 
it blows my mind and complete everything. But it was something happened. The things that were happening is that, okay, he got to this point and he, he talked about these vulnerabilities and their, and, and their suffering to get to that point, to the, the, the night of the soul. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, there are people that happen like that, but it's not happened to me. So I need to get a way to understand how my ego works, at least to observe my ego and don't believe what my ego is talking to me, you know? Right. So I go to the NRM because uh, in this process, when I was with my mother and uh, just finished all the, the treatment and all that, uh, these things, a friend of mine said, listen, I think you could be a good coach. I said, me, a good coach. I'm so emotional. I, I, it's not the point. So, and then I said, yeah, and I was always interested in psychology. Okay. The fact is that I want to be a writer, but I didn't give me permission those days. So I said, it could be easy to be a coach. So I got coach. I got the uh, then someone told me, if you have been done coach, now you need to do NLP, which is looking to your shadows. And, uh, uh, I was applying for an inscription to do this and someone said, but if you don't know Enneagram, you don't, you will not, un you will not have the traction and the structure to go ahead. And I said, okay, we're going to see what it is. And I go there and it was funny because uh, I did the test and the test gave me a number. One teacher gave me another number. I was as well put it like an eight. Someone else told me that I was a three and someone, and I, I was thinking I was a five. So what I understood is that the work was in me and maybe everyone has a little piece of reason, but the only person that know who I own was me. Mm -hmm. And I go to the Enneagram and then someone asked me just a little question, very silly. We were in the, in the group and we were doing, uh, preparing the, the table for dinner. And one of the teacher asked me, why you put it, you know, the plates like that and you put it that way and you prepare the things. I said, because I like that, that this is beauty as well. I, 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 I need that, that this beauty. And I said, okay, you answer. This is a four. This is not an eight. This is not a, this is a four. And then I got boom, my, my, my head did something like that and I, uh, they were already explaining the different ones and at that moment I say yeah yeah I've been trying to do all my life a three so a person looking for um, be evaluated by other uh, gain to the building you know scale the social ladder all these things to get to the happiness right and can work. I'm working with people that are above me and they are not happy. So no, this was not me. This was me doing the frame that everybody thinks that to be success, we need to do that. But no, I'm not successing by that. I'm in emotion. And this is what everyone told me every time. I mean, I was a very good manager because uh, I'm intelligent and, and I have distraction to do things. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, I was so emotional and every time I need to shut down my emotion and shut down my emotion. So what I understand is that I was in the wrong place. It was not me that was wrong, that I was feeling all my life, something was broken inside me. So I understood that no, I was not broken. I was my ego make me think I'm broken. Right. But I something else than my ego. Based on the past programming and things that, that you grew up with in the world and, and how it expresses we ought to be. And we don't give ourselves permission to explore who we are first and then find that place in, in society or the work or whatever. But I find that I want to make notice of the, uh, the combination of NLP and, and neuro-linguistic programming, for those of you who aren't aware of it, and what it 
teaches you is basically body language and how to read body language and then the articulation of the feelings and things that come from that. Well, as you're learning it, especially if you're teaching it, you become hyper aware of your own, which is, yeah. you, which is how you discover the yeah. shadow side of yourself yeah. that's hiding from you. Exactly. And that's a, a kind of an ancillary effect from that, but it happens, right? And the same with the Enneagram is you're looking into that, you're, you're looking at, okay, who am I really? And this person sees me that way. Another person sees me that way. Mm, still doesn't quite feel right. Right. So it, it's, and I think we all men and women both look for that place of, of feeling right. Yeah. And this is where we discover our own personal truths about our preferences. You know, there's another assessment, the, the DISC assessment, what I like it for is it gives you the opportunity to see your adaptive and natural self, first of all, because there's two different ways we show up. The natural one is who we are. I happen to be a persuading, persuading promoter on one, I've taken it twice, and a promoting persuader on the other. So it's the same kind of thing, right? <laughs> and then one was a conductor and another was an analyzing implementer. So yeah. there's this activity that we have in the workplace that is different than our natural self. But what I enjoyed from the DISC assessment, especially using it for others, is to discover their uh, problem solving and communication preferences. Because like Covey says, and I think it's the fifth um, of the highly successful habits, is that you seek first to understand and so the more you know about a person, the better you can understand them and communicate. So how in, in, in that reflection and, and discovering you know, your foreness um, or forthrightness in, in that sense, how did that emerge and, and what did you discover was the transition from where you were to a more consistent place of how you needed to be or where you needed to be yeah um you know the the quest for the base four is the quest for identity so it was so funny that i was um a coach and uh, i need to sell my business uh, like a coach and i couldn't sell my business like a coach because i even know who i was so even to get uh, a logo was horrible i don't know how many people i got it to get me a logo and then as well because my four need to have uh, need to manage the creativity i mean I, I how i can let decide it over how it looks like it was a mess it was a mess and i discovered in this path i discovered that uh, as i said before i was looking always to the people and said i know that i know that i know that i know that so what i got from enneagram in a certain moment is that Okay, you cannot continue like that. You are anyway, even if you don't know who you are. And then everything's open, a breakthrough. So why, what if you could be whoever you want? Because this is what the Enneagram is explaining. I mean, you could be whoever you want, as long as you transcend, integrate and transcend your ego. So the work is this transcending. So for me, that for the four is, uh, is the, the sufferance of the emotion that were not the good thing in the place I was before. Tell me that I don't need to be in a frame to be me. I don't need to have a name to be me. I don't need to have a logo to be me. And to be me is, if I don't know who I am, I can reinvent myself in the way I would like to. So it, it, it's, it's perfectly freedom, a lot of fear. Oh, absolutely. The fear of allowing yourself to be whatever you want to be, that, that's a permission that we don't always, very few actually give themselves. And in that process it seems that um as you're opening up to that kind of and this came to me some years ago is that 
there's this natural emergence, right? If there are all these parts and pieces of, of who we are and, and we have a design that is integral to our form, fit and function in the world, right? Because if, if you're looking at it from a, like uh, Dr. Irvin Laszlo does from a higher self perspective, yeah. right? And then how that filters down, kind of like cosmic consciousness condensing into form. How does that happen? What's the, the process for it? How do we recognize it? And, and what are we really capable of being from that perspective? So in that, what I discovered was that there is this ideal of a perfected form, fit and function. It's this in the world. And it's the same thing as, you know, we've heard for eight. Oh, okay. You know, is, do I have a purpose? Do I have a mission here? What, who am I? What am I here to do? How am I to be in this life? And so by going into these kinds of places as you have, that launches the discovery process of so how we can find that. So can you maybe go a little deeper into yeah, the internal yeah, process I can go that deeper. you went through? I can go deeper. So what I discover in a way is that if I'm able to transcend my vulnerabilities, I will be free of my own frame. So the vulnerabilities we have is uh, the identity we have about ourselves. Um, we give an image. So some people is a mask, for some people is a shell, for some other is an armor, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we rely on ourselves in this. So the problem is that if we rely on this, we are not going to access to our divinity. This is what we discover. We are, we are divine uh, beings that are in a material world. And, you know, I've been, I, 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 I listened something lately. They said that the human being, I mean, in the, in the nature, the animals are prepared to cope with, um, with life, but we are prepared to survive, but not to know the truth. So our mind, our structure, our, uh, our brain is preparing us to survive, but not to know the truth. So the only way to know the truth is by transcending surviving. And Enneagram, uh, in my case, helped me exactly because it's pointing exactly the vulnerability that I need to transcend. And each of us, has a point that I need to transcend. For the four is uh, who, uh, who am I? For the five is am I capable? So am I capable to survive? So when you tell, you tell in one of your, uh, in the interview you, do, you did in the 90s that you give yourself permission to go beyond your, yourself, your own thought. It's like a, we kill our ego. And because we are killing our ego, that is not killing, it's accepting, it's integrating. Yeah, it's, it's an embracing of it. it. It's a loving of it so that we can learn what its true purpose is rather than seeing it as a detrimental aspect of our psychology. Yeah. Right? And that's what we've been taught. And I had a friend that, oh my gosh, a wonderful, um, he actually started the waterbed industry and was written up in Time Magazine 1971 as a prophet of his own time. I happened to meet him in his late 60s, much different situation. But he had a phrase that he said to me, there's no ego without we go. Yeah. And that was just totally freeing it. And years later, I started using that same phrase in the partnering workshops I do for building road and bridge construction. So I, I'm dealing with a lot of really left brain people and I'm introducing these phrases and it, you know, I can see the looks on their faces and it, it's like, okay, I got to them because it got them to stop and think about how they were behaving with each other. And that's the all important thing, you know, is you're learning to work together with others because that's really, no matter what we do, we're not islands. 
right? We interact with others. So it's that whole, you know, seek first to understand and be understood is even more applicable because you seek to understand yourself first too. Yes. So there's that reciprocation going on at the same time. It's kind of the paradox of truth, if you will, in, in the inner and outer. Um, oh, and I mentioned Wilbur Smith earlier in, in our previous conversation. Another thing that the people from elsewhere said to him is that we don't know that we, we humans aren't aware that we live half inside and half outside. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly that what uh, I got from the Enneagram because uh, my worst thing in all the wars was always they said communication. They would say communication because I'm really emotional. And you know, I'm talking and uh, you already see this energy. So everybody was telling me that this was wrong. So all the time, my ego, it has been working little by little to manage my emotion. So mm -hmm. from one side, I was in a jail from, but the, on the other side, I train to do this better and better and better and better. So when they said that it was the worst of, the worst of me, it become the best of me. Why? Because when I'm working as a coach at that moment is my emotion that make the people feel close to me. And in which way? Enneagram teach me some very important thing. I think it's the most important. I mean, one is uh, uh, the knowledge about ourselves and what we need to transcend this vulnerability because we do things are very good, but we are not getting better mm -hmm. because there are this vulnerability. If we accept the vulnerability, now I don't have limits anymore. And I discovered that Enneagram is that every one of us has this vulnerability and everyone has been working little by little the whole life to cover this vulnerability. So this is an asset. Well, vulnerability, you know, I, I had an interview uh, for superpowers expert some years ago, and I'd never been asked what my superpower was, never even thought about it. Right. And so, um, Tanya uh, Reckler was her name. She asked me, Suzanne, so what is your superpower? And without even thinking, I blurted out vulnerability, right? Which is exactly what you're saying. And, and that gives us the freedom to experience the access to whatever next step is yes. there for us to make. Yes. And when we see this in everybody, and when we see the people, for example, that react to, to something because they feel hurt, mm -hmm. it's much more easy to, to remember myself. They're not talking about you. They are talking about themselves in their minds and is their own vulnerability. So please be in present with them. Oh, that is so, such an impeccably clear perspective that you just offered in recognizing that it's not about you right yeah. what we do as humans when we hear something we instantly reflect on our own experience with whatever it is we're hearing and often that's biased and prejudicial based on our past rather than being in the present and just listening to the other person's experience and trying to relate it from their perspective instead of our own. Now, you mentioned that uh, what I hear you saying about the Enneagram is that it's kind of like a cognitive science, right? Where there's all these different kinds of patterns that are evidenced through the numbers and the strength of that pattern in our lives is what resolves into the clearest number, so to speak. You know, it's like when we talked before, you know, both of us kind of test as an eight, but yet there was a deeper thing that you recognized just from watching some of my interviews that I was really a five under the guise of an eight, right? So exactly. Those, those kinds of peeling back the layers of the onion and, and, and thank you for that because that, that was kind of a blessing for me that you were able to, 
peel back the layer of the onion for me and, and share another perspective from for me to see that because i hadn't your your power is there we cannot if we try to be someone else we are saying life that the that the life is wrong it's a kind of pride i i don't know the name in english but about pride you sure. know sure um is a I come in with a Spanish name for that. I'm sorry, my English sometimes is not uh, to to my That's best. Fine. What's the Spanish? What, what's the name that comes? Orgullo. <laughs> Orgullo. This is uh, the name we have uh, in uh, in Spanish. Is um, what um, what uh, it teach me is that if I'm able myself to be present with me and accept myself completely 100% with the flows, with the good or the bad that I don't think that they are good or bad. This is something that I already, I think I learned from my mother sickness. Um, if I accept in everything of me, I don't need to teach people on things because my vibration will make arrive the right person to my life that I can help and uh, and I know that these people are helping me at the same time so mm -hmm. and teach me that by being selfish to you know to 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 understand myself completely or serve myself and and accepting myself I will have access to my gift to the people and this is the only way mm -hmm. If we try to help people without helping ourselves, we're just giving them pity. We are thinking that we are higher than them. The only way, there is no way to help others. There is no way to change the world. The only thing we can change is ourselves in our work. And by changing ourselves, this new uh, person we are, that we inventing in any now is what what the other be, will be brave with and doesn't need action it's like a, a Gartole said yeah we do action because the life it will put you all the you will see all the synchronicities and you are going to jump like I want into another right so well, there is not anymore what I was thinking that the life were putting me pools in the in the in the wells it's like, a, no, I didn't understand. I was the, the, the pulse putting on myself. Right, right. There's this push and pull that we have on life and energy and others that when we stop pushing and pulling, what do we find? Flow. Yeah. Because we've let go of the notion that we can control anything other than what we choose to be, do, and have in that moment then, you know, you mentioned the, the selfishness of that. One easy way, and this kind of occurred to me some years ago as well. You're moving from being selfish to being selfishly selfless Yeah. in that process, right? And, and it's, um, it's a tremendously empowering place, uh, confusing, chaotic, uh, nebulous when you first step into it, right? Because you have no idea what you're going to experience. And I think that's part of what the fear is in humanity is that we don't know what's going to happen. So we want to, you know, condense ourselves or, or constrict ourselves and begin pushing and pulling. And that just makes our lives that much more chaotic and unfriendly, to be honest, right? Because there's no happiness in that. And yeah. then when we let go of it, as you're saying, it, it seems that it doesn't seem i know from experience you know from experience that happiness just is there it, it's a it, it's not a side effect that necessarily it's the basis for yeah. that exactly 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 how can be again a child with all our experience and our, all our formatting are we able again to have the spirit of a child the child doesn't ask the cell i'm capable they're doing yeah, let's remember do 
Yeah. I remember a child once, uh, and uh, it was a it was a child. Is this child is very very intelligent, and he was a two and a half years was able to have a speech like an adult, and make uh, an uh, adults do a theater for her, and beside that, at the same moment, at the same moment. I need to help her and she wants to need to put the shoes and need to do the lace. And she doesn't know how to do it, but she don't get frustrated. She don't get anything. We were there, yeah. experienced how to do it. I didn't need to teach her. She just, she was with the calm because I was not pressuring her. So. We do normally these things. It's the formatting we got around. That's, you know, yes, as well, because we are in a material world. And that's normal that this survivance, survival thing is always with us. Mm -hmm. But it's this transcend that we need just to really... Life is giving us everything. It does. And, and let me ask this. We're gonna, I'm going to frame this in a different question. That, that Do you notice that when you are um in that presence right there's this the difference is instead of wanting you're asking right instead of wanting something for yourself you're asking how you can help the situation could be others could be you know all kinds of different things but th there's that shift in perspective from the selfish side of what's in this for me right? Which is how all sales take place is how can I, you know, transfer my emotion to you with what I have to give you and make you want it, right? <laughs> and in the flip side of that, there's the showing up of, okay, how can I serve? And yeah. then the letting go of your desire to do so other than the intention and just looking for what needs to be done. The example with a two and a half year old, you see, you know, she needs her shoes tight. So you automatically step into tying her shoelaces for her. And from that, then she's able to observe what you do and then begin to practice it herself. And that kind of example is so replicatable in our lives when we can be in that position. Now, as adults, we, we have all this program. Oh, we can't act like kids. Well, I still do. And my wife loves it. My wife's in St. Petersburg, Russia. And I find, you know, speak at different cultures, all right? You're Spanish. You grew up in, in a highly emotionally impactful culture, right? And Russians, I find there's no filters in what they think or feel, right? And as an American, I'm not used to that, yeah. right? So I've got all these filters that when I hear some being raw and real yeah. and authentic, I don't know how to take that. And I often want to feel um, defensive in the process, right? Because I'm making it about me sometimes rather than just hearing what they're saying and not feel attacked, right? Just because they're being raw and real. Well, Americans by and large don't have that capability for some reason. And other cultures, you know, it varies. Russian, I think it is probably one of the most um, authentic in how they think and feel because that's, that's their culture for some mm -hmm. reason. Beautiful. Well, maybe that's why Americans see them as an enemy because they can actually express themselves and we're so <laughs> jealous of it, right? I don't know. Um, we, we can we can uh, we can uh, look for the enneagram of the countries because there is as well you know uh, uh, America is a three and our world is a three at the moment mm -hmm. and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's we could see as well in the spiral in the dynamic spiral that uh, the orange uh, is uh, the three and uh, and and we are in this kind of uh, in, in in this era. So of, what, uh, unpack that a little bit, if you would. What's the what's the three perspective, or what's the understanding of, of uh, a three in the enneagram? Three, the three is based. You know, and, um, the enneatypes are divided in three groups. We will say, mm -hmm. and um, is divided. Uh, um, we have a base that is for each of us, or in the in the head, in the heart, or in the gut. I mean, we have instincts, we have uh, emotion, and we have our Central cord, another ancient 
philosophy again, like the indigenous three brain system, the gut, the heart, and the head. Exactly. So what's happened? Uh, what has happened is that <clears throat> uh, the three is based on the, on the emotion side. So in the emotion side, the, the main, uh, the main uh, uh, emotion is shame. I mean, it's, in fact, it's sadness, but sadness is uh, understood like a, a loss of something. Mm. And shame is a loss of our face. So, it's a loss of the mask we have. And so, that seems like, it, just reflecting on that, looking at the world situation, okay, we've been taught to be, you know, there's this global pandemic, and this has happened over the last couple of years, that pushed us into obsession on self-hygiene, sequestration, which made us afraid of each other, which made us ashamed that we might be able, I mean, we might infect someone else rather than the opposite of that, of feeling whole and complete and, and immune and, and operating as normal. Right? Yeah, exactly. The Enneagram exactly explained, for example, that at the moment, uh, if uh, we consider, for example, a country like a three, it will be that... Uh, uh, the the person or the country thing that the value is in what they do. So Americans do 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 because they and, need to do to prove the how they good they are. <laughs> right. and, what and the value do. and the value is when they other value the things you are doing. That's why you cannot have stopped to doing, 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 doing. So this is, we could see the difference between the, the Asian uh, and the Occidental, you know, minds. Yeah. So we could see that. And for example, we could see that when the three uh, that doing and uh, expecting that the other uh, give the value for the things that they are doing, when it's not working well, they go to a six. So they go to the paranoia, they go to a fear. Mm. And uh, that's happened a lot. If we could see as well America in that way, that in a certain moment, uh, you know, this, uh, for example, this, uh, this group for preps, America is plenty of group for preps uh, preparing, you know, for what it could come. We could see this in the, so we see the Hollywood, we see the, the, the bankers, we see the, you know, the people that uh, got the, the, the good life. America is the image of this. So everything is an image. And then when there's something, you know, behind this image is not working well, that we go paranoid. And then the arms, I need to have our, an arm in my house because I need to defend myself and I need to defend my values. So we could see even the countries, how can be used that way. Right. So, and also, I would say that it maybe you'll find this to be true. And, and I'll just ask the question. Do you find that also causes aggression? Okay. Exactly. So exactly. The, so aggression essentially, and, and I'd like to bring in live and let live uh, at, at this point and, and its principle of being two-sided um, you know, talking about flow and synchronicity and things like that, it landed me in the executive director position just a few months ago uh, with 30 chapters in 19 countries that are in flux. And so there's this huge opportunity and responsibility in, in stepping into that. Even, and what I find so simple and profound in the principle is that there's two facets of it. There's a, a legal and a moral. The live side is the legal side and removing aggression in our laws, in our legislation, you know, uh, even the governments, all right? We don't need to be aggressing on other countries at all. We, we're in the 21st century for crying out loud. We should know how to get along with each other and share our planet resources because we are only one planet. We are only one people. And this is just one time. Now, in that perspective, the, the legal principle allows us to eventually move into laws and legislation and, and change those things, which the, is the power of the people to do so, which we've avoided so far. Now, with the moral side, that's been a little easier. That's to simply let live. As long as you're not aggressing on another and you're happy with what you're doing, then have at it, right? We have no right to tell you what to do, how to treat your body, 
what clothes to wear, what religion to have, what, you know, all of those kinds of things. You, you know the funny thing? The funny thing is that the person, the Enneagram, the Enneatype that will say that is a nine. So is the, the triangle we are talking, you know, the yes. kind of uh, strategies. When my strategy, my normal basic strategy doesn't work, I go to the other and it doesn't work, I go to the other. So the, the ones that you exactly said is that like uh, uh, seeing all the points of view, seeing what is the reality for each of the, the people. The funny thing is that uh, you, your country got a president that is a nine. So this is the funny thing. A three, for example, with all this doing, need to be in a nine, in a position of a nine, to see what are all the parties talking, taking all the most important thing and value for each of them, put together and deliver something completely new. This is a big, uh, big shot. I'm not saying that Biden will do these things. What I'm saying is that uh, the capacity is there. The capacity, if he, if uh, if the work, if he works in his ego, is what it will deliver. And it's, I think it's what it needs now in in America with all this polarization, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it fits, you know. It fits sure. even. Even looking at those things, you know, it fits the thing. It fit the the narrative. So it really does, and, and and yet, you know, one person is not going to make the difference. We seem, and this is also what gives us. Um, it's like we relinquish our free agency to someone that we feel is an authority or that ought to have our allegiance, even when there's things that are obvious on a world scale such as you know the saudis not even paying attention to him right and his unwillingness to talk to putin about what's going on in ukraine or what nato has been able to do with their progression in ukraine kind of under the radar which is what caused the whole recent skirmish to come forth these were decades yeah. of events that were happening behind the scenes that nobody is being informed of we're just looking at the present and how it can be uh, i would say manipulated and that the public can be marginalized by the narrative presented through the media in order to do so yeah you know what happened to how can we learn to get along and how can we eliminate all of those things that are in the way of us doing so? It's easy. I have a project here in Luxembourg for this. <laughs> Don't we all? Now, if we could just... I mean, it's, I, I, I know, it's not me. It's really? like everybody is doing this all around the world. Sure. We try in Luxembourg, a group of people, and in other movements I'm working as well, um, we are trying to introduce uh, emotional intelligence in the school. Mm. So, if a child that is still is passionate to do the lace, we still mm, promote that way that uh, life is learning. Life is not, uh, we don't need to get frustrated. Uh, you know, get out of all, all this frame and leave the possibility of the child that can understand themselves, this auto-observation about their feelings. Mm -hmm. When you teach them that emotion lasts only 90 seconds, everything we have afterwards is the blah, 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 blah we put in our minds because of the experience we have in life. Mm -hmm. And we are, as we said, we never be in the now. So what we want is that the children know since the beginning in the school to know themselves, to know to regulate their emotion, to understand what does it mean their emotion, that they are, they are engines, they are fuel. This is gas. Our emotion, our gas to get to our objectives is gas to get our dreams done. Yes. So if we promote this in a way that is healthy, they will know each other in a different way. They will see the vulnerabilities are point that need to transcend and you need to, and you will understand the other. This is what Enneagram teach me that everybody has their 
vulnerability. So someone can, you know, bully him. And what I see is someone that is suffering. What is happening in their house that is need to bully? Him. So if we teach the children on that and communication is getting better, the history of the humanity will evolve because we are at this verge. We are exactly at this verge and we haven't done differently in thousands and thousands of years. And now is the first time that human has this consciousness. It's the first time that, no, it's not the first time. I mean, we have Buddha <laughs> thousands of years ago. We have in just- In mass, there's no, the reason that perhaps the reason that it hasn't evolved to, to a great degree is because we were still concerned about survival. And exactly. now with this, you know, industrial age and technology age, the, there's less of a concern for it, especially in first world countries and some even in developing companies or countries and companies too, perhaps. Um, so what happens then is we've got this, um, well, you were mentioning the emotional intelligence. So in the 80s, there was multiple intelligences that Gardner brought out um, for learning children's learning styles or observing their learning styles, which was above the three, the visual, kinesthetic, and audio. Then the, and I think there were eight of those, maybe nine now. And then Goldman came out with the emotional intelligences. And, and so then that's another layer on, on top of that. And I taught high school for a number of years. I, I got my MBA in a, a teaching cert because I wanted to kind of follow my own children's development because they were high school age at that time and I'd been divorced. So I was just trying to stay in touch with their generation. And what I found was many things missing in modern education. And so I wrote a business plan after you know, teaching in public schools, private schools, residential treatment centers, um, charter schools, and, and um, teaching uh, special ed students, or exceptional students. So I found that and created a business plan that turned, uh, I used kind of an Australian model for holistic education, which at that time was including body, mind, and spirit. We don't do that in America. We don't even assess the kids coming in to see what their proclivities are or what their passions are. We don't do that. We just say, here's the box. We're going to teach you this and you've got no choice. You know, there's a little bit of choice as to, you know, what they engage, but there's no support for their passions and purpose and, and discovery. So with this shift from that to including the emotional intelligence like you're doing, and even looking at it a little further, uh, uh, this came from uh, my discussion with Robert Gilman, who is a longtime uh, proponent of harmony with self, others, and Mother Earth. So that's the, so there's mind, body, spirit, and Mother Earth, because, you know, gosh, where do we get our nutrients from? What makes up our physical body? That all comes from Mother Earth. So we truly are her children. We just, for some reason, have forgotten or ignored that fact. And now it's maybe come up for return in our, in offering that understanding to our consciousness so that we can be more integrated with it. Yeah. which may evolve into this new world order that's an, of natural design rather than one that we've prescribed and want to project on the world to meet our beliefs or, or perspective of what should be. Why can't we just understand what is and then evolve from that place? Now, how, how do you see that? Because the Enneagram really begins that work. How do you see that evolving in our world now? And what evidence do you see of that happening? Well, uh, evidence uh, are there. The number of people that are interested for any kind of uh, development. Just, I mean, I, I'm not talking even about what we are talking about this consciousness. We are talking about almost spirituality, divinity, mm -hmm. and all these things. And uh, Maybe this kind of narrative is not uh, yet uh, to the point, but the people, you know, if you see Tony Robbins, for example, is a is a is a is an NLP is an NLP teacher. I said, right. so he's already going 
go already in is is using another kind of narrative but is already a step in it. it you see how is possible that Edgar Tolle could sell all these millions of books there will be something in there uh, we have uh, lately um, um, this uh, this uh, uh, the spiritual teacher that uh, this the Bedlam in one that I don't know never how to pronounce their his name that he was living in France recently one year ago, death or something like that. Oh, Teach Thich Nhat Hanh. Yes, thank you, thank oh. you for this. And and you see how it's incredible. And for example, I'm on LinkedIn. I, I was before in, in Facebook and all these social media, try to to connect with people to talking about these things, and it was a little bit difficult. But I I went to LinkedIn. And I find thousands of people there. And I said, how is possible that a place that normally it will be set in the self, you know, LinkedIn is a place for working. They are uh, artists. Uh, they are um, people working for financial. They are working and, and they are all of them thinking on my life now is yeah. not fulfill myself. This should be something else. Yeah, and I think funny. we got to this point. It, it's funny you make the the comparison, and you pronounce LinkedIn just like my wife does. So maybe this is sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Be Gloria. You're perfect as Gloria. Thanks. Um, it, it, and this is kind of an interesting juxtaposition of Facebook and LinkedIn. As you mentioned, LinkedIn now seems to be those uh, comprised of those professionals that are actually seeking right where facebook is more about people bitching about what they're not finding and, and not you know it, that's changing or at least a little bit it's i, I behave the same on both platforms so i i you know i'm like i'm a proponent of t harbeck or what you do anywhere you do everywhere so my verbiage may change a little bit and, and things like that, but I, I do my best to show up authentically wherever I am and, and just be who I am. So, uh, you know, but there's this um, seeming disparity between those two platforms. So I, I agree with you that, and guess what? That's how we found each other was through LinkedIn. And it's everywhere. You know, we yeah. have Clubhouse. Thousands of people on Clubhouse, you know, with the room open, talking about all these things. There is a room in Clubhouse only for saying thank you. It's open, uh, it's a project to have this uh, uh, room open 24 hours, seven days, uh, seven. And now it's open only 12 hours per day. But it's coming people one minute after other saying thank you, saying thank you to life, Thank you to people. Thank you to the knowledge they, they got. I mean, some, in, in a certain moment, I thought I was in a bubble. Mm. But not because yeah. when I opened my heart to really don't have a problem to talk about the ego, spirituality, Enneagram, things like that, I found in people all around. And my project is... I don't need to do anything for this. It's, it's, things are coming and happen. People looking for me when you are here. I, I, you, you, you asked me for this and I said, uh, two weeks ago there was another person and, and, and uh, a month ago was another person and, 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 and now everything is going. So we are, if we are here and we have uh, people listen to us, it's because there is this space. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember someone said with the S-spiral, the dynamic S-spiral and everything, is that we need to get a f at least first the 10% of the population having this motivation. And the world, the one world, will change, will make the shift when we arrive to the percentage of the 30%. Mm -hmm. So I believe that all the problem we are having now all this sufferance we have in all around the world, this nonsense, because it's no sense, but we are seeing all around. I mean, there is a sense. I understand that there is That's a sense. It, there is a meaning. Yeah. It's part of a process of evolution that every planetary civilization goes through, from what I understand, because it's just the, the normal process yeah. of an evolution of consciousness, a collective consciousness 
that's seeking to support itself rather than in the past our patterns have been to diminish others in order to set ourselves above them like you were talking earlier mm -hmm. right? there's this disparity of you know when you and it goes back to namaste and in lakesh right that, that we see each other as ourselves as the same then we can figure out how to you know what dance tune to put on in order to play together <laughs> or whether we even want to play together right and and yet there's that there's no animosity when you realize oh i just don't vibe with you it's okay you go off and do your thing i support that have fun don't hurt anybody don't hurt yourself be healthy right and then come back and, and say okay now what is available for me here um and, and this is you know where you put your attention intention and interaction towards one of the things i told my wife luba at the beginning of the pandemic was i really hope that this self obsession on self hygiene and sequestration gets people to turn inward and apparently it did to a great degree because you and i are talking as a result of that and there's hundreds yes. of people and thousands or thousands of people in hundreds of groups that are doing similar things now watching that all evolve to the next level of integration is going to be a lot of fun and it is also evidence of speaking of planetary civilizations and timelines that cosmically we're moving from one age to another from the piscean to the aquarian and there according to jose arguez there's a 50 and, and others of his elk um, there's this 50 year segue in between and we're a little over halfway and so it opened in 1987 it's closing in 2037 so we've basically got you know 15 more years for us to find that state of less entropy yeah. which creates faster time frames to get things done and that momentum increases exponentially as it happens so it appears just from that perspective of just looking without emotional attachment desire want will all those kinds of things that it's happening and the, our free will and our agency being used to step into this like you have and i have and in this conversation we have right it feels so soothing and even in the potential confusion and chaos in it because even those the confusion and chaos have patterns that we haven't recognized yet and that's why we see them as see it as chaos we don't see you know it's, it's sometimes it looks to me it looks like a contradictory but it's not contradictory from one side uh i think uh, we are going to our in our sphere of life with the people we meet Everything is getting better and better and better and better. And on the other side, we see the world going worse and worse and worse and worse. I mean, I saw this just because I see the news, because it's I'm with the people that I normally have relationship and the people I meet, everything is going better for every one of us. Isn't that a strange? Everybody are going on the show. Yeah. Media and on the saying, other oh, side, everything's horrible, and, and yet our direct experience with those around us are like, oh, this is pretty cool. We're having fun. So what's up? That, that's the point. So so it looks like uh, this need to get to a point that a lot of people will suffer more to have their awakening. Unfortunately, I, I, I don't okay. want this. I don't want this because it's sufferance and and, and 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 i'm here talking to you is to avoid sufferance mm -hmm. because it could be pain but suffering is something else suffering is a choose we choose to to suffer pain we can feel pain okay yeah. but attached to the narrative the past narrative or the future narrative to something that is happening is what we are in this suffering right. and the problem is that the the, the world is i mean is plenty of this suffering and for one side you know that this will make people wake mm -hmm. but on the other side i said my god we have the consciousness now 
We don't need any more to go through suffering to awake. Would you say that that sense of suffering is more perceiving being disconnected? Yeah. As opposed to feeling connected to something greater than we are that has no limitation. And again, you're, you know, it's the choice, right? Uh, suffering is optional, as uh, the great teachers have said. Um, and yet we continue to do so. And, and yet all of that still indicates that there is a greater connection within that, within us, that we can maybe, sense. Maybe it's uh, just coming out an idea in my mind. Uh, if I can say, maybe it's because of uh, we are, uh, our bodies are only capable. I mean, the evolution of the human is, uh, it, it was referring to survive and not to know the truth. That's the sufferance is in line with the survival concept. Mm -hmm. And if we take out the suffering, I mean, and, and we open, I mean, the, the, the limiting belief, like uh, the life provide to us, we transcend the survival and we transcend the suffering and we transcend everything. But uh, I mean, my work is to be here to tell the people that don't, if they don't want to see the vulnerability, how they can go behind this mask how they are going to reveal the, the, the divinity they have in their self. I used to talk to the people and when I do videos in Spanish, I call people, people precious. In Spanish, we have a, a, mm -hmm. a sentence to address to someone like a bonita, like a um, mm -hmm. nice girl, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, I don't like so much this nice because of the beauty and the, you know, and the girl and sure. I was not a, because we don't say uh, uh, this for men, you know, oh, and yeah. then, and then I was yeah, saying, there is no bonito, right? No, it's there is no bonito, girl, there is bonita. Yeah, you know, pretty again, well, that sounds a little strange. And then uh, I took something from our, uh, our culture, precious, precious has value. Yeah. Does, we are all precious. Precious. We are irrepetible. I remember being a child, and thinking that two are twins in the same bed, just the light from the sun touch one of them during some hours and not the other. This just make the difference. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say to everyone, everything is, uh, is don't, don't believe in what I say, because what I say is my experience. And uh, my experience is valid for me. It could give you sunlight. My bright could give you sunlight, but the real shine is only by doing yourself. There's no any other way. No any other way. Yeah. Nobody will learn to walk life in other shoes. And sure. this is what we need to understand. Yeah. That life everyone. is an experience. And it's there for us to step into, not avoid. Yeah. Such a wonderful conversations I've, uh, we've had, Gloria, and warms my heart to have one such as you on with such uh, understanding and, and depth of knowledge of your own process and being able to share aspects that others can hear that allow them to practice on their own. And of course, I'll have your information below for people to be able to reach out to you and find out more about the Enneagram and, and you, your school and things of that nature. Um, it's been such a pleasure. Is there anything that you'd like to leave as um, uh, a simple piece of practical advice for our audience for their daily living? Uh, practical advice, no. You know, I came here and uh, I, I have all my fears because I'm not doing interviews. I wonder w why you will talk to me. I'm very little thin in front of all the people you talk in this interview. And I was uh, panicking 
And what I did all the time is that doing all the things I need to do every day and not thinking in this interview. And this morning I woke up and I said, oh my God, I have all these things. I'm not going to be to the level. And, and then, and I put one of your last uh, interview and it was softening me. And I said, you know what I need to know now. I have two main, I, two, between two or three main uh, vulnerabilities. One is that I'm not enough and to be unique. So if someone else had already told all these things, what else new I can add? Mm -hmm. And the second is I will be capable. So I said, you learn that this presence, close the videos, close everything, talk with your husband that is coming back from the thing that he is doing, play with your dog and it will work because it doesn't matter my expectation but his matter is the connection someone will get something from it and what is need to be happen is already happen okay. so the expectation we have is our mind is our hamster <laughs> wonderful that you got that insight and had your own apocalyptic moment even before we began our chat it's wonderful. Oh, thank you again so much, Gloria. Um, it's been a pleasure. And I'm sure our guests will enjoy it and follow up with you as well. Uh, um, you know, I'm a kind of bulldog. If I, I, I'm going to be after you because uh, this conversation has been uh, really, really enriched my, my life and, and my point of view. So I'm a bulldog. I will be after you afterwards, that one. So uh, thank you I'll so much. That. I will anticipate that. And namaste and namaste. in la catch. And thank you all for sticking with us for this episode of One World in a New World. I'm your host, Zen Benefiel. And as always, I'll see you next time.